What's up, everybody? It's your boy Chaos, and welcome to a new episode of Take It to the Table. I am joined by none other than a star studded uh, panel, as you can see here. To my right is none other than the returning Anthony. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing all right. I just got done work and immediately came to this. So it should uh, be fun. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, definitely with the topic that we're going to be talking about. I'm sure you got a lot to say on this one. And of course, down to the bottom down here, he is not a bottom, but he's down there. It's not over <laughs> there. Clark Taylor, how you doing today, Clark? I'm doing good. I'm stoked. It's a three show day for me. I'm happy to be back. I'm back home. Birthday weekend was off the charts. All out was off the charts. And I'm um, stoked. Let's get into it. Of course, happy belated as well. And I'm not Thank jealous you. of you being front row at all, 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 at all out. You made sure you, you, you made us aware. Add that you were at all out, so yeah, I hope I'm glad you had a great time and a great next weekend. time. Well, next time, you'll be right there with us, you know that. Oh, yeah, 110 percent. It has to happen, definitely. All in, then all out. That's gonna be a lot of traveling for me. I'm not sure if the missus will agree with that, but it'll we'll be see. A home we'll get and there. home, it'll be a home and home. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how we will we'll, we'll, we'll get to that bridge, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. And of course, last but not least, is of course the, the yin to my yang, the joker to my Batman. Is none other than to the bottom right, is none other than soul. How are you doing today, soul? Oh, good to be back with the boys as always. You know, I'm doing very well, especially because I've paid off my credit card from All In. I'm not oh, yeah, longer <laughs> bankrupt because guess what? I mean, like, I mean, we have bankrupt this boy right now. What's this now? What's this now? Guess what he got? You will see oh, on the God. vlog as well at the time. At the time it's released, you see the vlog. Yeah, wow. Two yeah, times. Another one. Two yeah, times. Time. Two times. Two times. Time. Red but black. that isn't all, is it, though, Soul? Did you get the purple and gold one, too, three times? I'm kidding. I oh, oh, imagine. What <laughs> meaning would have if it was available? Well, I would have been really and have to put it. Yeah, this course. one, I'm pretty sure, is what it was crying after this. Watch this. Yeah, yeah. All in turnbuckle pad. Oh, that's, oh, that's cool. cool. That is very, very, very cool. Yeah. I'm just glad I was able to bring it home and not have to mess around with my case like Mania. So I'm happy there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all came back in one piece. So, um, so yeah, of course, glad to have you guys here. Of course, um, uh, as of this recording, we uh, well, as you've probably seen from the thumbnail, it's gonna be a certain uh person's show. It is gonna be a CM Punk special. We're gonna be talking about obviously his um ra rather turbulent run at AEW. Um, you know, it's ups and downs. Was it the right call? Where do we? Where, where does he go from here? What do we expect from his apparent statement that he's going to be get delivering and whatnot? And um, and yeah, how does how do we feel about you know this is going to affect? Is this going to affect AEW in the long term? All that good stuff. So strap yourselves in, grab a popcorn, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. All that good stuff. And uh, without further ado, let us take it to the table. Jesus, Chaos, you're really showing off that budget with that intro. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, do you think that was the, it was the, it was the orchestra that, 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 that was the hard part? Flipping now, they have to do about 20 yeah. takes on that, but yeah, no, it's all good. It's all good. 300 piece, 300 piece. Yeah, you could tell, isn't it? God yeah. damn, it sounded like the Boston Pops. It's, it's better than Avengers Endgame, 100%. 100%. I'm glad um, Soul got the Boston Pops reference. <laughs> I didn't get one. Fair enough. The, the, um, they did the Home Alone soundtrack. That's that orchestra. Ah, fair, that's like fair it's news. like gigantic. Fair dues, fair dues, fair dues. So let's start Where from the beginning. <laughs> well, let's, I'm going to start from the beginning. This, you know, just you know, so we can gauge and maybe we might get more, you know, more thoughts on the situation. Uh, so August 20th, 2021, the first dance. We got to see the return of the one CM Punk. To pretty much, well, as from this quote I got, um, that Dev Meltzer said, Punk's appearance in his home city drew one of the most amazing audience reactions to a pro wrestler in U.S. history. The reaction was compared to Montreal's reaction to Hulk Hogan in 2002, shortly after his WWE run. Or the reaction to Triple H and MSG a few months after he re after his return from a torn, torn quad. It was up there. Obviously, on that, um, a few weeks later, he had a match with Darby Allen. Had a great match. Had a great match with there. Then obviously he um, transitioned to one of the greatest feuds in AW history, him, um, him against MJF, which ultimately uh, was cult, cult culminated um, at uh, um, Revolution with the dark collar match, one of the probably best matches in AW history as well. Um, and then obviously uh, he eventually went on to go and defeat Adam Page at Double or Nothing, 
um, for the AEW World Championship. And then obviously, shortly after that, he went and bust his foot, <laughs> jumping into the guardrail. And um, he was out for, I believe it was five months. I believe it was five months. Yeah. Um, during that time, obviously, Moxie became the interim champion. Obviously, Punk came back. Punk lost the first um, and which, and which made Moxie become ultimate champion. But then he won it back at All Out. And um, obviously, that was at, that was All Out 2022. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and um, obviously, we all know what happened after that. Obviously, it's been infamously known as Brawl Out when he just went on the rampage and questioned people's friendships and everything and eating muffins and saying that he works with children, which all culminated in, you know, people getting bitten, dogs getting getting hurt, and um, people getting suspended. And um, people like Ace Steel, the Elite, and Punk himself was gone for, you know, a new, numerous amount of months. On top of that, obviously, he, he torn his, his arm, wasn't it? It was his um, shoulder. Tricep. Tricep, mm -hmm. that's the one. Tricep, yeah. torn tricep. Seven, tricep. seven months out. So seven months out, on top of obviously being being suspended, pretty much went cold, cold turkey, didn't really hear anything much about it. And then um, up until he was gifted his own show, AEW Collision, came back in June, um, did that uh, that counterfeit Bucks promo in his return back, um, got a mixed reaction, obviously. You know, people were saying, you know, is, is it right for him to come back, all this stuff. He got his own show, got to work with certain people, and then obviously eventually, you know, he uh, started putting some ground rules, started banning people from being at his show, even the head of talent relations, Christopher Daniels, uh, and then which ultimately um, uh, culminating in August, or just yet yeah, in the month of August, he had a he had an altercation with Jack Perry, uh, moaning about um, that he doesn't want World Glass to be used in his match. Um, obviously, that caused bad blood between them. And obviously, we all know it all in. Uh, during the Jack Perry and Hook match, there was obviously that car, um, that um, that, that car stunt with the um, with the broken glass. Um, and then obviously Jack Perry shot it into the into the screen. Real glass, cry me a river. Which obviously, I assume, obviously picked off CM Punk in backstage. They obviously had some altercation. Headlocks were 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 initiated. People were being choked out, and of course, certain people were fearing for their life. As <laughs> as a certain owner of a certain AEW company, as obviously um, uh, as alluded to, and um, which ultimately has made him not only be uh, well, pretty much gone from the company. This was that was the story that brought the camels back. Uh, so yeah, I guess it has been the rise and fall of CM Punk, and it's been very turbulent, very mad, very weird. Um. Yeah, we have obviously we have good memories. We have bad memories regarding this. Um, but obviously, at the end of the day, he's gone, and you know who knows what the ramifications will be at the end. We're just waiting to see what because you know Punk is not someone that stays quiet for long before you know something else happens. So I just wanted to get your thoughts on this whole run, and you know, were you are you happy it happened? Do you wish he never came back? You know what was was is it best for business? Is it worse for business? Um, so yeah, I just I, you know what I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna throw it to I think arguably the one of the biggest fanboys here <laughs> or previous fanboys should I say? Stole. What's let's go with you? What's your thoughts on this whole situation? This whole kerfuffle? Right. <sighs> I mean, if you want to know whose side I'm on, I think this says it best. Go white claw. Oh, White Claw. <laughs> oh, how about it? <laughs> Wait for it. So I remember being up here in August 20th, 2021, when Punk made his return. I'd stayed up purposely to watch Rampage and that old TV behind me for it. You know, I had work, basically. Cheers. When it finished, I had work. No, cheers, buddy. When I, I had basically work, so I basically only got an hour of sleep for going to work, but I was still living off the hype. I loved that show. Just like even with the first dance, I just remember the punk thing. I don't even remember the match happening. On it. Apparently, it was like Jurassic Express versus Private Party, Jay Cargill, Kier Hogan, and Mox versus Daniel Garcia. That apparently that was the card for that rampage. But it was the punk moment everyone was talking about, and it was amazing. And honestly, I was on with the punk train, you know, from there to what he did with you know his matches with Powerhouse Hobbs and what he did afterwards there with Dar you know, Darby Allen and all that stuff and stuff Sting and all that. 
I mean, I, was, I, I flew over for Revolution. That was my first ever wrestling show. It was the dog collar match with MJF. And that's probably the best match I've ever seen live from what I, I've seen altogether, even with All In, even with Mania 39. Just that experience alone, you know, him coming out to Misery Cantares, Ring of Honor theme. I just, the, the, the story behind that was nothing that I will ever forget. And then you go on to All Out. And I remember Quick Chaos. We were down there for Clash of the Castle, right? I remember how hyped that was. Like, ah, AW All Out is in like a week. It's going to be the best show of the whole weekend. And that bit my arse like a fucking piranha. <laughs> and then and then I soured on him <laughs> with how he acted. And then when he came back, it was like, yeah, he's came back, but the company hasn't crumbled with his presence being gone. It's still continued on. There's been great stuff happening. MJF's title run, MJF and Adam Cole's friends. We're still getting great stuff, great matches as well. Bullet Club Gold, I think. Yeah. I can't say their fucking names. Like some tongue twister shit. Bullet Club Gold. There we Diet go. Bullet Club. Yeah. That's what the I best, call them. The best Bullet Club. Zero they, calorie Bullet Club. Yeah, they've been, but they've been killing it. And it shows that. They yeah, have been. They have been. And I just think, like, if you think about AEW from 2019, the pandemic time, none of this, none of like backstage shit leaked out. They kept Brody Lee's whole thing private to the T. That was like lock and key stuff. But as soon as Punk comes in, we get in randoms of the shit. And now at the end of the day, I wasn't there. The whole IWC wasn't there. We don't know who was spilling the shit. Could have been Jericho. Could have been the Bucks. Could have been Kenny. Could have been Tony Khan. Could have been Tony Khan's cans of White Claw just speaking from own sentience or some stuff like that. We don't know. But Punk's a 40-year-old man. And when he's acting like a goddamn child throwing monitors and banning people from his show because he doesn't want them there, and he's telling people that the Hangman couldn't come to Collision to record a single segment because he didn't want them there. Punk's not the boss. Tony Khan is the boss. And yes, people have been critical of Tony, and I do understand their opinions. He does need to grow a set. And by firing Punk, that is a leadership decision, and thank God he's actually done something about it. I mean, because no one's no one's heard anything about Jack Perry being apparently a tyrannical maniac before Punk came in. No one's heard any of this stuff. And I've seen people been critical of Tony's phrase and of fear for my life. Look, everyone takes fear and you know subjectively. One thing could fear somebody, another thing could fear somebody. If you've got a pissed off guy like Punk who's not going to do two shits and throwing monitors around and possibly getting other people harmed. Yeah, I would probably be a bit scared to myself. And obviously, Tony Khan would make the statement before Kilton coming out to the crowd. I think that took fucking balls. He did a recorded segment at home for the people watching. He did a public release online. And coming out with a chair and sitting down in front of that crowd who knew they wanted punk, explaining to them why, that took a lot to do. And I respect him for doing that. So at the end of the day, was punk rungs good to an extent? Until Brawl Out 2022, that's when the shit hit the fan. It was just an absolute tumbleweed of self-destruction and self-loathing. Punk is a talent, yes. By the end of the day, his own worst demons is himself. He likes to act like he is a legend, but I don't classify, personally, I don't classify CM Punk as a legend. When you're gone from the business for seven years and you're not in the business and seeing how it's evolved from then, I don't think you can classify yourself as a legend. No offense. And obviously, you know, business keeps on going. It's going to keep going without Punk. It's going to keep going without Vince McMahon. It's going to keep going without Tony Khan. It's going to keep going without the elite. Because if we don't continue going with wrestling business and then we just keep focusing on the past, then what have we built? What is the wrestling business built to elevate new stars, to keep the, the tradition of these shows, keep the tradition of this business and the tradition of the spirit of this business going if you just keep focusing on the past stars? So, yeah. CM Punk's gone, and I'll say what I'll say again. Weak body, weak mind, weak spirit, good riddance. Fair enough. I mean, <laughs> he does, I mean, uh, yeah, you can't really sink. top that. It's, um, yeah, you spoke true facts there. I think, yeah, it, was, it wasn't until he pretty much got there that you said, yeah, like, not even just backstage drama just with him, but, I mean, like, obviously with other people, it was just always, you know, backstage drama. And I guess you get that with pretty much almost every wrestling promotion. There's always some tension or heat between people and whatnot but but yeah for some reason yeah his toxicity i guess maybe rubbed off on other people and it just affected him in different ways and whatnot um but uh but yeah, every situation is different um uh, i'm inclined to agree that it was it was a good run just unfortunately it has been marred with 
And I think it will be, unfortunately, forever remembered for more for the bad moments than the good moments. Even though, like, you know, his return and his match with MJF and, you know, all that stuff was, you know, they're, they're memorable. They should be part of history. But, yeah, it looks like, obviously, we everything feeds off negativity the most. And that is what's going to be more remembered, the brawl out and obviously what happened at All In. Um, and obviously him getting fired just before All Out. So it's, it's yeah. kind of it's it's nuts. But what about you, Anthony? Um, what's your thoughts on this situation? Do you think it was worth, uh, the, was it good business dealing with him in the first place? And this, what's your thoughts on all things? The thing is, when you bring in CM Punk after seven years of fans begging for his return, you know Punk's a lightning rod, both on and off camera. Phil Brooks is difficult to deal with. Everyone knows that. It's common knowledge but he's also a draw, you know, for an audience to be chanting for him for seven years and no indication that he was coming back. That's a hold on an audience. I think in a lot of ways, people backstage in AEW, whether it was the elite or other people that think they're bigger stars because they were successful in the Indies. Punk was at the highest level. More people know who CM Punk is than they know what AEW is. Mm. So I think in a lot of ways, people didn't want him there. And, you know, like Sol said, information wasn't coming out. It's kind of convenient that the guy that doesn't get along with the elite and who are best friends with Dave Meltzer, suddenly information starts coming out with the guy that they don't like. So I think that's a little interesting. And a lot of this could have been resolved. It all started with Hangman allegedly going off script during a promo. It wasn't resolved. It kept escalating, which ultimately led to the infamous press conference that the only positive that came out of that was probably Mindy's getting a plug. Uh, (laughs) To me, that moment, that buried Tony Khan. That made him look like every negative information went, oh, he's a wannabe fan, a billionaire son. You know, he's he's just playing promoter. He doesn't have control of the company. The fact that he sat there while Punk buried executives of the company and said nothing. Mm -hmm. That was the moment where if Tony was going to step up, that was the moment you shut that down. You shut that shit down. And the fact that he let that happen buried him. And I don't know if he ever really recovered from that, to be honest. And the brand got hurt by that whole thing. The fact that he didn't bring him, he didn't eventually fire him or negotiate a buyout or whatever. And he thought he could bring him back with the elite situation still not resolved. They still don't like each other. You bring him back if they can make peace and you can make money off of it. They didn't do that. He wanted to have everybody and we'll just split two shows. It didn't work. Punk was out of control. Punk has an ego. They knew this was going to happen. I don't, the second go around, how did you not know this wasn't going to work out? Uh, That's the part I don't understand. How did you not know? If nothing changed, you were just going to run a company split and just hope that these two don't get along. Wait, like two uh, months ago? It's crazy. It's, it's, well, it's, it's, when, it's when you look at it, Punk was injured multiple times. Mm-hmm. It really wasn't even a full two-year run. Technically, he was on the payroll, but like he wasn't yeah. really on TV for two years. I think Punk had like under 30 matches as well. Uh, you know, so, I mean, Roman's reigns, his title reign, has lasted longer than Punk's entire run in the company. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, you know, so in a lot of ways, younger talent, whether it's Jungle Boy or whoever, it's been known for years. They don't like listen to veterans. Punk saying don't use glass, real glass. That's for your own safety. Shane Douglas literally just said that in, a, in a, an interview recently where he was talking about indie things. And he's like, real glass is unpredictable. You can nick an artery. You know, there's any number of things. Goldberg almost lost his life bashing his arm through a limo because it wasn't prop glass and sliced up his arm. You know, Punk saying that to, to Jack, even if he didn't agree with it. He, all right, you're going to take a Looking shot on air. Him. All that stuff that happened, Punk's responsible. But at the same point, 
all that stuff was instigated. The elite instigated. Jack Perry instigated. They mm. didn't want him there. Ultimately, that was it. You know, the whole press conference, that shit wouldn't have happened if that was Vince McMahon or Triple H or Nick Collins. Hell no. There. He had no Punk never had real respect for Tony. He yeah. was viewed like a lot of fans view him. Oh, want to be. Oh, he played online promoter and he has money. So now it's a thing. And it's a shame because I think Tony has the best intentions. And I think mm -hmm. when Punk first came into the company, he probably did have the best intentions to give back to the business. And in a lot of ways, and it's an F you to WWE. Honestly, when he came back, that was an F you to them. I, mm -hmm. I mean, that's how it started. Yeah. However, now I think it's more of a situation going, okay, they're immature backstage. As bad as WWE was, maybe I got one more run in me for a short term, maybe to mania, you know, get a licensed thing, Hall of Fame, video games, come back for appearances here and there. I think a short term thing with WWE would be successful. And on top of that, not only has a lot of time passed, he's a lightning rod, Vince McMahon, WWE, they want to make money. So yeah. for a short term thing, I think it's possible. And the add a factor is Endeavor has worked with Punk before. WrestleMania 40 will be the first mania under the Endeavor banner. It's the 40th WrestleMania. You're going to want to go big. I don't think he can get bigger than giving Punk one more shot, one more match. Uh, you know, somebody said uh, maybe a six month contract from, you know, Survivor Series in, in Chicago. Um, I don't, I think a 90 day non compete, bare minimum. I don't, I don't see that happening. I think the question is whether or not the non competes a factor. Mm. You know, I think that's going to be interesting. One humorous thing I did see online, somebody made a comment and they said the reason Punk was so mad about the Jack Perry moment uh, at All In was because that was the car they were supposed to pick Punk up at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> that which, is I, which I thought was, I thought that was pretty good. That's funny. <laughs> and I want to quickly say something there about Punk going back to WWE. If, if Punk's going to come back to wrestling at all, it's definitely WWE. It's no Impact, it's no GCW, it's no you know, NWA, that's a laugh in itself. It's not any of those. The only thing I think stopping that is Punk does have a lot of heat with WWE. The doctor that sued him is still employed by WWE. That's a big thing there as well. Vince notoriously has hated Punk, so has Triple H. Seth Rollins making a public comment that he's a cancer as well. And obviously there's a lot of friends of AW wrestlers in WWE still. Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn. Even Seth and Roman, friends of John Moxley, who John Moxley and Renee Baquette have a bit of unlikingness towards Punk mentioned on Renee's um, podcast. So there's that as well. And I just think, as well, I, I can understand why WWE want to hire him the quick cash Hall of Fame thing in Chicago and all that stuff. Get Punk's fan base to come over, buy some merch, and make a, one program for Mania as the highlight on their endeavor. That's fully understandable. I just don't think. I fully think there's way too much bad blood there now with AW and WWE. I mean, WWE is also going to be looking at like how he's acted. I mean, apparently he dissed Regal as well. Apparently there's like a report from Meltzer that he dissed Regal calling him a Triple H. Student. Yeah, yeah. That is a yeah. wild one. So, yeah, but, it, but again, that happened prior to him showing up backstage at Raw. Because the report right. was that he wanted to talk to Triple H and I guess bury the hatchet or whatever. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's about business and money. If both sides can work together for a short-term deal, I think it's entirely possible that it could happen. And quite frankly, if Punk is really that pissed off at Tony Khan and AEW, there's no better revenge than going back to the evil empire. And and as one last F you, I, I think a huge reason Punk has been quiet this long, there might be legal reasons, but he may also be having a conversation with WWE. And they might be going, save it. You'll drop your pump pipe bomb in our ring. I think that's a huge possibility because the fact that Punk has kept his mouth shut for the past couple of days, it's, Hard either, to it's, it's either legal reasons mm. or there's something going on. I, I wonder as well, do you think maybe he's in, like, do you think he ever expected to get fired? Do you think maybe he's a bit embarrassed that Tony actually finally I, dropped the hammer on him? I, I, I think, I th I think oh. he wanted out at this point. I, I think, I think, I think, he, I think he wanted out. 
I, I think like that I, it's it's a weird one because like compared to how it was when you see how they presented him from compared to last year all out to all in like after, shortly after all in they were still showing his match and they were still mentioning punk when it was last year uh, all out there was they were they pretty much thanosed him and the elite from existence and they, there was no mention of them for months um so i think they were kind of they thought they were gonna obviously come to terms with it and be cool with things but then obviously tony khan obviously i think he just got um more of an airful from this committee whatever it is which i think is the evps i'm, I'm sorry i think it's the evps and then it was just like you know what it's it's more trouble than it's worth just 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 cut this cut of losses and um it, it, but he did shout out that he said he threatened to quit like when when that happened at all then anyway, I, so I do I, think i do think at the end of the day sam punk is such an intelligent guy say what you will about him he is high iq he's a smart guy you hear him talking and, and he's intelligent for sure mm-hmm. he, he's not stupid i think he knew when he was stirring it with Jack backstage when whatever happened that with that altercation happened that he didn't care at that point, no matter the decision. It was like, if you keep me, you keep me. If you don't, you don't, but I'm going to do it anyway because I don't care anymore. Like, I think that, that at that point judgment was out the window uh-huh. and, and he didn't mind the result either way. If they, if, he, if, if, if he hadn't have been fired, he'd have stayed. If he got fired, he didn't care. I, I think he had finally done like the throw my hands up thing. Like I'm done. Um, it yeah, doesn't matter I think anymore. But it's, also, it's also the fact like Anthony said it as well in the on the head. Like he, I don't think he just didn't have any respect for TK in like in the first since place. last year in, in the uh, first place. So he just he's bigger than the company. Is what he's yeah. Doing, right? saying, it's kind of saying as well. You look at the Revolution prod, the the Revolution um, media scrum when Punk was talking about Tony Khan buying Ring of Honor and having his footage. It's a light and day from the guy who then chewed yeah. him out from all out. And it's kind of weird. It makes you think, what happened to him in that span of time besides the injury that made him flip his lid and go, I'm going to Yeah, it, it, it was what went on backstage. I think he went in there with the best intentions, realized there were forces backstage that didn't want him there, didn't mm. want his guidance, didn't want any of that stuff. And it got to a point where, you know, ultimately he snapped. You know, a lot of that falls on Tony for not getting that resolved, like allowing that to fester and eventually blow up. That's on multiple people. It's not just punk. It's the Mm. elite. It's punk. It's Dave for reporting all that garbage, Uh, you know, and and Tony. But like, that's where it ultimately fell. So I think when he came in the first time, his intention was, I'm going to have one last run. No matter how many years this is. I'm going to have one last run when all that crap went on. And when he got brought back, I think that was like, well, let's see if this lasts about 10 minutes. Like, I don't think yeah. he really cared at that point. It was like, I'll co- I'll continue to accept the paycheck. I'll go in there. We'll it'll last as long as it lasts. But when this is done, either I, I call it quits, call it a career. I mean, he's, ar- I'm sure he's already got F you money at this point. He doesn't need to do yeah. this. He's yeah. doing it because he enjoys doing it. And I also think deep down, I think he knows that at the end of the day, WWE, even if there is bad blood, they'd be willing to bring him back even for, even for a short term. Because again, Vince has had problems with a lot of people. Yeah. Ultimate warrior sh- sued him a bunch of times. He's beloved at this point, you know, Hogan. so Hogan, uh, I think macho would have eventually came back to, you know, they, they did the figure. I think he was going to come back. Brett, the whole Brett scenario. I mean, Vince will bring anybody back, really. If the, at the end of the day, if you can make money off of them. So yeah, no fair point. Uh, fair point, Anthony. You, you made you made up a lot of good points there. Um, I just want to I just want to know. Um, or get get your get, get your questions. Obviously, not only CM Punk's gone, but obviously, James, um, Jack Perry has obviously been suspended indefinitely. Mm-hmm. Um, could y'all? Could, do, what's the chances? Could could you imagine him coming back? And is if he does come back, obviously, because we don't know what the extent is. Um, surely he must debut or make his return back with Justin Timberlake Crimea River theme. Surely, yes, he must do. That, that would be the move to do. I would love that. I mean, River. Like uh, it, it's sure. got to be cheaper than Final Countdown. 
It's mm. gonna be cheaper. The way that Daniel Bryan yeah, was actually yeah. saying how expensive that was, the fact he got it a second time, surely it must be a like. No, if I was Jack Perry and I would come back with like glass break, Crammy River walks out, says thank, thank you, or like you can thank me, and then drops the mic and leaves. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. And then yeah. be- <laughs> because here's like if you saw it all out, the fans didn't really hijack the show. Like the Chicago crowd, the, oh. the punk lawyers. No, there was no, there was hardly any of that. Um, there was a lot like, of like there's a lot of tension when the the unbox were there in FTR. The yeah, a little, but the FTR wore the Chicago flag shirt. And that one sold like a ton. I I got one myself even like, um, Mm -hmm. and I think that endeared them to the crowd enough that the crowd wasn't like, at least in our section, the, the Chicago people were behind FTR for sure. During that match. I think just based off those shirts alone, because a lot of those sold. Yeah. I mean, I think something as well with like, with Anthony's previous point of like the CM Punk chance, people coming for trying for him coming back. I think, the CM Punk chant in WWE just end up to becoming a way of annoyance, like like yeah, the right. chant and stuff like that. People would just chant it because they know it's the thing to chant when you don't like the, something's happening with the product. Not necessarily because there would have been people like, oh, what are we chanting? CM Punk? Who the fuck CM Punk? I don't know. We just chant it. Like, all right, cool. We chant it. Yeah. When Punk left WWE, he was viewed by a lot of the fans as the martyr. They yeah. were viewed as the yeah. evil empire. Yeah. When everything went down at all out. AEW got viewed as the victim and Punk was no longer the prodigal one. And I think mm-hmm. that's that was the difference. He lost a portion of the fan base. He was the voice of the voiceless and they weren't happy with the voice of the voiceless at that point. So I think he 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 would get a mixed reaction and I said this when I wrote a piece when he was coming back. I said what's going to happen is he'll be cheered in Chicago always just like Brett in in Canada, but everywhere else, he's going to get that mixed reaction. He's going to get the Cena reaction, half the crowd cheers, half the crowd boos. They never really took full advantage of that. And I think one of the other things that they made a colossal mistake on was you had punk come back with a title that he was stripped of and claiming to be the real world champion. Yeah. You didn't pay that off. Yeah. If you're going to do it, yeah. I would have done it as the main event of the first collision. That way, if Punk only lasts one night, at least you've resolved this. Yeah. <laughs> because right now, Punk has a title. Technically has not lost it, even though he was stripped of it, but you can't even oh. claim that. You can't claim that anymore because you let him appear on a pay-per-view. What if he goes it. Alundra Blaze? Would oh, I wow. think, and Clark? What I, if he goes so Alundra Clark, Blaze? You're, you're, oh my this, goodness, Clark! This is I don't what know I if that's said. where you were going, but no, no, I, this is Clark, it's Clark, funny. I, don't I mentioned this. Oh, I hope in, not, Clark. No. I mentioned. I'm begging this. you, Punk. Please Clark. don't, as a oh, fellow oh, oh, Chicago. Oh, 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 Clark, I mentioned this to Ben yesterday, and he wants oh. me to write a piece on this. He oh. how to book this because they threw this out. I said what he could do. He could show up on WWF WWE TV. With a bat, with the bag, he doesn't have to show the belt. He mm. could, could in theory, the challenge whether it's Seth, whether it's Roman. You know what's in this bag title for title. Oh, that'll be such good TV. And oh. You don't have to show the belt, the audience knows who That's it lawsuit. is. That'll be a does, lawsuit. Does, anyway. You can't sue, you didn't show it, it's in the bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's he didn't say what it did. is. And oh, no. Tony would now have a problem because if that title gets merged with Roman's title or Seth's, you've now added a dispute into your own world title because you didn't resolve it when he was there. That's the infinity gauntlet right there. There you go. One of the I have to say is if that happens. I mean, and, and here's the thing. Even though he has a non-compete, in theory, let's say he has a non-compete. Punk knows enough people in Chicago. What if he's sitting ringside? At Survivor Series, if he paid for the ticket, he's not, he's not in violation. He's a paid customer or a guest of the. Then arena. he could bring the belt. No, well, I don't think he could sh- legally. I don't think he could show it because Tony would have a trademark to it. But they could fully acknowledge him because Tony does not own CM Punk's name. Yeah. Mm. WWE could go, hey, look, here's former WWE World Champion. CM Punk. 
they could do whatever they, they, they he's could a member Phil of the Brooks. audience. He's just equivalent as you were, Clark, at all in. He's a paid customer at ringside. Yeah. Th- oh. th- that to me is the smart play. Well, I mean, I mean, I think that's what they did with Mercedes Monet at all in. It, yeah, and don't if, you think? And, and if you remember, Clark, when Sable had her dispute with right. WWF, she it, nothing ever came of it. But they showed her on Nitro sitting at ringside, and they said, "There's mm-hmm. Rena Marrow." It never paid off, but she appeared on at, at ringside. Yeah. I don't know. I, I forget what her story was. I don't know if she had a contract, didn't have a contract, but it was yeah. it was shocking at the time because right, yeah. nobody knew the dirt sheets weren't the internet thing was in its infancy, yeah. so nobody really knew when you saw it. Right, wait, that's Sable on Nitro. Um, so they could do that with Punk. There's a number of avenues there they could do with Punk, and b- teasing that, you know. Where's Tony going to sue? He'd have to prove that WWE brought him in. Punk knows enough people that a conversation could be had and he can end up with ringside tickets at yeah at, at Survivor what's, Series in Chicago. What's, what's your thoughts on that, Soul? What's your thoughts? You're, you're just like, you're stressed. You look stressed. What's your thoughts? I'm sweating in this fucking shit now. Fuck. <laughs> Oh, imagine. I opened that Pandora's box of that of, is a you. Be- I would love to see that. Is a, I, I have I am I planning on oh I am planning on writing that thing up. As it, it, the more I think about it, the the more ideas I have with this thing. Ben's gonna mm-hmm. give me some images. I have some ideas with this thing, but oh, I, I, Clark, oh, this man. is the one that you know. I think you'll appreciate I'll the see, most. I'll say this right. I'll say two things on this right now. I haven't sweated this much since I saw Orange Cassidy pin Jeff Jarrett. And I lost my fucking hair. Two, two. Where's if my this happens, Phil Brooks is a tiny piece of shit. Oh, it would <laughs> am be I am I wrong? And, and you know that's the whole thing. Now I, I think now here's another thing. No oh, fuck. In theory, they could possibly show the belt if they pixelate it or do some shit. Because if you don't actually show the belt, you do almost like when DX asked the the girls the flash and they do the black bar. You might be able to do that. I don't know, but if, oh even if you just have the bag, I, I like the bag. Yeah, the you, bag. You, I like the bag. You, you know, you know what the, you know what this is. Yeah, I'm the real world champion. There's no trademark on real world champion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he could flat out say that you never have to show it. Goodness is gracious! Storyline. Oh is, my! Uh, am, I, am, am I wrong, Clark? It, no, no, no. It would be crazy. It would be crazy, and it would be the most punk thing ever. To do exactly. That. Uh, that would be the that, most CM Punk I, thing. I, I'd, I'd almost do this. This is what I would probably do. Rollins in, is the guy to do it with. It, assuming he has the non-compete. Let, let, uh, let's say the non-compete's not a factor. Let, let's say it's not. And he's able to show up in Chicago for Survivor Series. What if he did it with I'd, Cody? I would, do, I would do a Scott Hall. He comes into the ring, interrupts some match. And gets on the mic, you know who I am, but you don't know why I'm here. And he's oh. got the bag. They, you imagine the ratings on the next night's oh. Raw with Triple H coming out and going, "What are you doing here?" Like, I mean, I this mean, is Tony Khan's worst nightmare. Yes, I, I, <laughs> is that? I, I need to. I need to write this blueprint out. The more I think about, I mean, the better it is. Oh, you're giving me a migraine. Oh, it's but he loves it. So loves it. He would in, absolutely mark the fuck out. At, oh, in in the words of Vince McMahon, no, 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 it's no. good shit. No, <laughs> and you know what? You know how it has to start, actually, though, is before he even does that, mm-hmm. a masked figure has to throw Seth Rollins through a windshield. <laughs> you, you could, That's I mean, how you start it. <laughs> in, in, all, in all fairness, he That's could, how you start it. In all fairness, he could wear the mask from when he used to back in the day, yep. they could easily do that. Yep. But how do you add more prestige to a new world title than unofficially merging it with another company's oh, title? <laughs> well, but then you got to have the glass spot. He throws him through the glass to start the rivalry while masked. And you can, Oh, and the, the go-to is this. We can yell real glass. Gimmicks. No, no. He's got to yell gimmicked glass. <laughs> Yeah, that'll work to too. really yeah. get him. 
Oh, uh, yeah. I, I, plexiglass. I, I, plexiglass. Yeah, yeah, plexiglass. Plexiglass. Yeah. Um, no, not plexi. That's that's slipping quarter angle and show and shame my man. No, you want sugar glass. Oh, sugar yeah. glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, sugar glass is the worst. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean that's that's oh, yeah, the plexi smart. is the one they messed that up. I forgot about that. They yeah, they that gave one, bullet, they did bulletproof glass. That's what it was. I mean, yeah. I, mean, I must say if I feel like if that does happen, I feel like Tony's gonna be like new title design right fucking now. I don't it doesn't matter. Shit. It's not gonna. It's not gonna. It's not gonna. Yeah, gonna that is- he 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 opened that Pandora's box. Yeah. The moment that he stripped him and still allowed him on TV with the title and had a graphic, real world title, it's official. You had it on. Like, uh, in your, I'm like, that's the play. It's it was such a weird storyline because like it's 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 only him that actually acknowledges it. Like not even MJF even talks about they, it. They didn't they, even they, they, punk the whole time. They never it, pulled it off. Yeah. But nah. you can't you can't say. Only he acknowledges it when you have a graphic, and you hide yeah. it. Yeah, like you, you can't. You... It was maybe maybe he steals in the production truck, and he just did that. Oh, it's so he... brutal. <laughs> I just, I just, blew, so I just blew everything up with that theory, movie. didn't I? He steals yeah, the whole bullshit reason of as well. Like, how the fuck does he steal have a job and Punk doesn't? What the oh, fuck? Yeah, surely he must, he's got to go well, by that, now. That he's got to be gone gonna too. That, that ain't gonna last. Yeah, um, that ain't gonna last. It, l- listen, Clark. There's a reason why I threw out for the throwback this week. Ric Flair's WWF debut. Yeah. The title. This all works. It, it all connects. Be... Right. Are we it all playing checkers and Andrew's playing 4D chess? What the fuck? What if he <laughs> oh, actually, uh, uh, though, yeah. what if he just returns to AEW? No, no. We and all it's all a work. Just... What if it's all a work? Damn, right, this you know is, what? You know what? I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. <laughs> you're you're, you're, you're it. Let's Let's do do it. throwing out a bet like, right now. Soul's throwing out a bet. He's throwing out one of his bets right now. Okay. You don't. Bet. You don't have enough body hair to support whatever bet you're going to throw out. But oh, shit. You don't know me. I have enough fucking shit. <laughs> if Anthony's storyline does fucking happen, I will fully. Sh- I will fully go Kurt Angle bald for this bald. shit. Me too. That's cool. Deal. And your facial hair as well. I'll I'll do it too, Soul. Fuck you, bitch. What? I'm... Oh yeah, fish well, me. Too. You know what? I'm calling. I'll do it. I'll do it because I. I mean, it's so perfect. I it grows it. back, but it'd be hilarious if it. Happened. I mean, it, that's something Punk would fully endorse that. And oh, at yeah, the end of the day, Rollins would do business. Roman has said he would work with Punk again, and the other X Factor, Paul Heyman's there. If yeah. anybody is the Punk whisperer, it's Paul. <laughs> Paul Heyman. If yeah. Paul Heyman's his handler, things are done. Yeah. Heyman's close with Hunter. We'll I mean, smooth we'll it over. It's, yeah, it all works. Heyman is the Heyman is the X factor there. That, that's a great shout. Uh, if anyhow, if anyhow, Punk is 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 going to be at Mania, I will I will fly to him. I want to see it live. I'm not yeah. ever joking. I will want to see that live. Like yeah. that is everyone just, would. You gotta be. You gotta be. That's a part of history right there. Yeah, that is. Insane, that'd be we'll crazy. Chaos. We can camp in the parking lot. That's fine. I, I, I don't mind. I, I will camp in the car, whatever. I like, I, I've spent all my money on, on, the, on the flight ticket because I don't know how much it is to, to Philly, but that is it. Would it'd probably be, it'd be cheaper than LA. You passed, you cut, you went over Philly to get to, to Clark's. okay. Then there you, there you go. And say no more than yeah. yeah, probably then fair enough. Um, yeah, that is oh my god, that is that is such a that's that's a beautiful that's a perfect storyline. I, I just I just can't it's just that you just gotta wonder like who like for it is for, for it not to interrupt all the other storylines that are branching out that's looking likely for main it's obviously Roman versus Cody, um Seth depending if he still has the title till then. You my know. my guess there there's two people. It's it's Seth. It would be night one's main event because Cody and Roman are, are night two in in, yeah. in, in my theory. Uh, if for whatever reason Seth doesn't want to do it or WWE gets cold feet with the bag, uh, even though I think that's a smart play, the other option is, again, it's 40th WrestleMania. 25 years ago, it was main evented by The Rock and Austin. We all know Punk wants that main event. We all know Punk wants Austin. They teased oh it my once. God, <laughs> you're doing too much. Knock you're it off with much. Punk Stone Cold. You, no, you're, you're, that's, that's too far. Too You've far. gone a step too far. Oh, no, 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 no. It's you no, know. No, 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 no. no. You, 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 you know that's though. the one it's match you would. 
you know that's the one match he'd oh, come I know. back You'd for. go wild. Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. But that's just absurd. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not even absurd. I mean, like, uh, the, the possible. I mean, like, Austin came back, so he's... he's that's what go. I'm saying. Could he you imagine the be- oh. uh, like a beer in his face, straight edge spot? Be wild. It, it'll, be uh, a stri- yeah. it'll be a South Philly street fight. You okay. know it'll be a street fight, regardless. Oh, yeah. And Punk has history here. Yep. Austin has history here. Oh, yeah. It all it all fits. <laughs> it just works. <laughs> That's a I, I, lot. Listen, I, I literally gave two must-see main events for WrestleMania. That's and it. we're Done. how many months is, out? Yeah. That will break records. If you got Punk to do that. It already, it already has. Records. <laughs> It was shadow records, man. Oh, uh, my screw God. you guys. I got Big Bill on Rampage. I'm good. I love Big Bill. He looked great on Saturday or Sunday night. Oh, well, Ricky Steamboat. Yay. Yeah. Um, he did. Uh, I, I just, compl- hear, I just completely Ricky? threw off the whole show, didn't I? No, oh, you, you, you no, just, no, you, 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 that was good stuff. It's half 10 and I'm hyped as well. <laughs> it was it was yeah. You kind of sold me to be honest. I was going to like play the devil's advocate and try to defend punk and stuff. And I was like, no, I'm good. <laughs> no, we done. We done. Yeah, it. That's fine. Done. You got it. And that's another episode of t- No, I'm joking. No, but <laughs> so, so, so is, so would that be my pipe bomb? <laughs> hey, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'll give that. you pipe bomb. I'm actually done. I'm actually done. This is bullshit. This is bullshit. <laughs> destroyed the whole show. Stop saying such God. smart things. I destroyed so. so I'm like, wow. Does anyone have a, a bad that's idea a, we can follow that with? God damn it, man. My Apparently, I don't have any. So, race. go ahead, Soul. Give us some. Yeah. <laughs> punk. Oh, shit, I gotta fuck all now. You fucking beat me to the punk. <laughs> I think that is actually oh, amazing. Um, what if he goes back to the UFC? Oh, fuck. Jesus oh, Christ. I'm kidding. <laughs> that's, just, no, that's, that's a bad idea. That's, that's a bad idea. We'll get him another <laughs> UFC fight. God oh, my damn it. Who we get Punk Brock in the one one UFC? Of, do you think that's one of the worst signings in UFC? Let's just let's run off with it. Do you no, think it's the worst. worst. That was the, he's yeah. the worst, yeah? Because they paid him um, as much as like a legitimate contender he, he, he was signed and, for his name not his yeah he was trying for his name and he went oh and two and not only did he go oh and two the second one the guy that beat him also got fired so was they didn't like even build or something? yeah yeah they didn't even build yeah it was mike jackson they didn't yeah. even build the guy that beat him the second time the first guy mickey gall they tried to build and then gall had like a little decent run after that and just mm-hmm. got squashed Mm. Immediately following it was too that, early. it was too early. Again. Yeah, nothing happened. So I mean, it was it was bad. I will say though, um, I saw one of his first press conferences. Well, he they had him uh, about a month after he signed at a uh, UFC. Gosh dang it, which one was it? I want to say one fourteen Rampage mm-hmm. Rashad. He was on stage during before the weigh-ins and did a Q and A. And one yeah. of the fans chirped him, and he had a great one-liner back at the fan where he was like, I'm the one on stage with the mic, motherfucker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was great. Like, the crowd popped. It was classic, like, punk on the mic. He was good for that kind of thing. And then he was good at the fan fest there. I remember, like, uh, the line was long for him for autographs. So I'm sure they got a lot out of that. Oh, but yeah, just I'm his sure. actual fighting career. Which, interesting, is, like, you know, he trained with Duke Rufus, who's legendary uh, trainer and coach. And apparently drove two hours every morning from Chicago to Milwaukee to do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, in Duke coach Rock, and it kind of hurt Duke's reputation as a coach. Mm-hmm. I mean, because... you mentioned that uh, when you like... to the UFC, I remember when me and Chaos were down in London for all in, we went yeah. to the sports shop and there's the UFC section. We're like, Chaos, where's Punk's shirt? In front of my punk <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, about that. <laughs> no. Uh... Um, the fact that he's still in the UFC video game is comedy to me. <laughs> he, he's the worst yeah. rated fighter in UFC 4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he wants to be in UFC 5, though. I'm pretty sure. Well, I hope not. Oh, uh, I actually think the, the likeness, I think he will be. I genuinely yeah, think no. he might be. What are the chances 2K is now mouth-watering, going, pre-order bonus? No, my days. We got it. <laughs> You want your collector edition now? You gotta buy it for CM Punk. Fucking yeah. it'll be the straight. It'll be the straight oh. edge edition. Yeah. Oh, you think he's gonna be the game? The game cover? I don't think they're gonna give him. The I game don't think. No, no. I think he's gonna be the pre-order bonus. 
If yeah, the real bonus at least. Yeah, no more Bad Bunny. Forget about Bad Bunny. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Punk as a, as a pre order bonus. Uh, Although I, that I, I, that Bunny Destroyer is kind of nice. That that one's in my, nice. my that's in my my career move set. <laughs> um, I've got that one employed. <laughs> Listen, I only come to the take it with actual good ideas. So, what do you want from me? <laughs> Bird. So, what do you want to talk about? No, I'm joking. What are you going to say, Soul? <laughs> I got fuck all now. I'm done. Um, fair enough, fair enough. All right. Now, th- one question I wanted to ask you guys. Um, <laughs> I know I'm, 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 I'm trying to get this over an hour at least because this is yeah, always the shortest episode ever. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, do you feel like what Jack Perry did was he trying to instigate to sit like to get punk out? Do you think that was part yes. of the game plan? Fuck or... Yes, he was trying to instigate. Why else would he say it? Mm-hmm. I mean, not that he was trying to instigate or get a re- but he was being a uh, you know, he was being Wait, smart the wrong. Don't get me wrong, was, wrong. Yeah, he was absolutely knew that that would yeah. make Punk pissed. Yeah, uh, 100%. He, 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 he looked right into the camera. I mean, yeah, he didn't honestly, say it not to Punk. Yeah, he he didn't <laughs> he didn't do it with the mindset of going Punk's going to beat me up, but he did it to instigate. And again, he is supposedly very close to the Bucks. If you know, I know Jim Cornette with his conspiracy theories, but. If there was a legitimate effort to try to drive him out of the company, these little digs and let himself implode, is it is it a really that far of a stretch to think that there's there, there, I mean there's a possibility. I'm not saying it's the craziest theory out there. I don't I, mean, buy, I don't I don't buy it was the head lawyer. <laughs> like I don't buy that yeah. nonsense, but the possibility of of the Bucks and people close to them doing throwing little digs, mm-hmm. hoping that Punk would self destruct and get him out of the company. Yeah, that's it's plausible. I'll say that it's a fair point. Indeed. I mean, even though I've been very anti Punk for being such a former Punk fan to now being anti Punk that I've drank so much now my liver's pretty much on the downgrind. And um, I think Jack Perry is on on the bad side as well. Like he. He should have been suspended as well. Like, I'm not saying he's totally innocent in all this. Like, yeah, I mean, I do agree with him being suspended as well with the whole situation. But, I mean, it's just such a shit show. Like, I feel like Punk should have, like... Like, with Punk, he shouldn't have acted out and throwing monitors, apparently. Like, like Dave Meltzer said, like, Punk apparently lunged at Tony and, like, he was downplaying it. I mean, it makes you think, what the hell did he do? Did he, like, did he take his white claws and shove them down his throat or, like, slap him around? Here's the thing. is is as angry as punk is, I don't necessarily think he's an idiot. I would find it hard to believe if he legitimately lunged at a billionaire son. I, I you yeah. know, the lawsuits involved plus legally, legally Tony could have pressed charges. So mm. I, I don't think unless punk had a complete mental breakdown, I <laughs> don't believe punk in his right mind would have done that. And I do find it again, kind of funny that Dave, you know, friends with the Bucks is pushing the narrative of Punko. Punk went after him. I mean, I we weren't there. I don't know. Yeah, I but find I find I it a little. Hard, I find it a little hard to believe that it's I, it was to that degree. And with all those people back there, no one would protect Tony. It was probably tense, but like I, I it, can't it, it, it was him tense lunging get, at him. Did, did also, what's a lunge? <laughs> like he, like what do you t- like? Is he a jungle cat? Like what do you mean? Hey. <laughs> he lunged at him like you know what I mean. What like, does that even mean? There's enough people back there, and again, Tony's a lot of people's meal ticket. They're they're not going to step up and yeah. block Punk from doing that. Let, I mean, yeah. let's be honest here. But apparently, Joe like calmed things down, or he got in between well, whatever happened. Yeah. So. Which we'll I, I feel bad happened. for Joe and all this. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Because, because if Punk didn't want to go out there, that's not right to the fans that right yeah. and it's not right to joe right and i think ultimately joe probably said to him like dude do this for me do this for the fans don't worry about them this is about us yeah i think that's probably what got him out there mm. that's that's my theory i i've no nothing to base that on but that's a thought that would it's definitely make sense to me it's crazy as well you wouldn't have thought of um uh you wouldn't think of 
when you, when we saw it all in, you didn't you wouldn't think anything would have happened backstage. No. They were real professional. No, there was there was no yeah. indication from watching no that, indication. thinking that, that there was a fight backstage. I mean, I remember me, nothing me, during the show. You and Allison were sitting there chaos, and I mean, I think it was Allison who pointed out first. Like apparently it was a backstage shit, and we we're like, oh for God's sake. Yeah, that popped up mm-hmm. real quick. Yeah, the, very quick. The, the, the came report out. came out like shockingly fast. That's why I thought it might be a work. Yeah, and it was yeah honestly because well, it was so quick. How how like the, it was posted about? The, the, I think oh, it was halfway through the Kenny match. Was it kills? Maybe, yeah, well, I think well, yeah. It was shortly after his match. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, oh yeah, Drew, Drew Kenny and yeah, you're right. Yeah, it doesn't take much for for somebody to send a text message. To a certain I just, journalist, I just really hope somehow that security footage footage gets leaked somehow. I want to that, see that's that, that that's probably the most that sought after footage that, that that in wrestling that is the most sought after footage probably yeah. of anything. Definitely, definitely. No question. Wow. Um. Well, yeah. When we said it was gonna be it's gonna be a CM Punk field show, we weren't joking. Um. So uh. So I, I guess we're we're all in agreement that you know this was best for business for for Punk to go and um. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I guess the door is open for WWE to pretty much give us one of the, the biggest storylines since the bloodline. Craziest <laughs> um, storylines ever. I mean, yeah, that's, that's so easy to book. It's, it's absolutely- it really is. It he, books he, he, itself. He, he could work with Rollins. And even if they did do Roman, even if they did do Roman and not for Mania, but they did Roman thing, you again have, wait, another Paul Heyman client. Whose loyalty does Punk belong? Whose yeah. loyalty does Heyman loyalty have? And Punk could even plant the seeds, whether to Solo or to Roman, going, you know. Well, and Brock and Punk are, Punk are friendly, so that's possible too. I swear, you after can, you, just, you, you can do that as well. You work for the company, right? Yeah. So, so, so what if? So imagine if. So imagine if obviously Punk comes back as a Survivor Series. He says about the bag. They somehow it's Roman is Reigns versus Punk before Mania, and then probably the Rumble. Gonna, Rumble probably, probably Rumble. Yeah. yeah, and then and obviously Cody is gonna be is gonna be, gonna be facing Reigns mm-hmm. at Mania. Cody wins everything, so he's not only is he WWE champion, he's also obviously got the merge of the AW, and he finally became a wow. AW World Champion. That that's <laughs> Cody's <laughs> route to win the and, AW title, and, and he's not violating his "I'll never challenge for it again" yeah. because it's technically the WWE Championship, and the lineage is merged into it. Yeah. So Tony now has the fraudulent champion in MJF. <laughs> yeah. Up, yeah. I, I fucking hate this shit so fucking much. <laughs> it's not gonna happen though, fully. I don't think. I don't think Punk would do it at the end of the day because I think. Uh, no, I think he would do it. I, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. I, I think Punk would do it. Actually, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase that. I think it'll be talked about something like that, but I think at the end of the day, Triple H will go nah. What? Triple H, you mean the same man that I drove up to WCW in a tank? Yeah. No. And also, he, he, he classifies a new car. We know it was a car. Yeah. Not and he also, the, the, he always does his snide comments. Obviously, he called Triple H um, the His aunt company? Promotion. You know what yeah. I mean? So, like, he would, he would have, he would do nothing. He would, he would do everything he could to, to get this to, 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 to work. It's possible. Triple H, That's possible. Andrew, yeah. I swear, I swear to God, Anthony, my hair fell like a mania. <laughs> and look, you didn't even have to spend any money for that to happen this time. Oh, oh my gosh. God. I'm good. Yeah. Oh, too funny. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna clip I this. Just, this I, I just amazing. dropped the pipe bomb and and yeah. you all. <laughs> and this left everything in the smoldering numbers. I love it. <laughs> I can't believe he didn't come back last night though i'm kidding that would have been crazy i i couldn't believe that those are the rumors like he's gonna show up on raw i'm like that's oh, no. psychotic no, not that fast, I, mean, I mean in all honesty if that happened the internet would oh. have exploded oh yeah um, by the yeah. way the funniest would be if he did just start attending shows well, like even like just on his own like the internet impact exploded everything. Page, well, uh, well, raw like well, well yeah. remember fox was allegedly mad that WWE did not sign Punk. WWE is in negotiations for TV contracts. I forgot they had him on that show. Yes, WWE oh, yes. backstage. <laughs> so if they wanted, if WWE is looking for again a record-breaking TV contract, hello, 
<laughs> the most controversial man in the history of the business at the moment is available. <laughs> Even if it's short term, Fox may yeah. end up with a guy they wanted. Yeah. I mean, we'll say this. Imagine if they hire Punk back and then they just hire Ryback at the same time. Just like F you the Punk. <laughs> The big don't turtle. Ruin it, guys. Don't ruin it. Don't ruin it. <laughs> Not right back. So, Did you just say I, right back? So, so yeah, I know, right? You, I, I literally gave you a steak dinner. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And hold on. you took a shit on the table. Hold on, hold on, hold on. With that right back. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in the I'm just trying to make it better so AW is better than everyone. What the fuck? What do you want? <laughs> he knows that like, if that it's happens, okay. AW is fucked. That's I'm actually gonna have to watch Raw now. Fuck, I'm gonna watch three hours of shit. Saying. Oh my gosh. On that note, guys. <laughs> that is, on, one, on that note, we actually made it over the one hour mark. I thank you very much for that. <laughs> can, I, can I tell you, it. nothing brings me as much pleasure as the fact that I appear on this show the first time in a while especially the first time with soul in a long time. And I broke soul. My <laughs> mission has been accomplished to death. <laughs> I'm going back to the fucking job center. Fuck. <laughs> Who would have thought? Um, We're clipping this. Definitely. Oh, soul is depressed. Freaking funny. Oh my all. gosh. Well, yeah. As always, thank you very much, Clark. Anthony, Hang you on. absolute gen. Hang and on. Also, wait, hold on. Hold on. Announcement. It's not my retirement. That's coming in like 20 years. Um. <laughs> Oh, fuck's sake, don't give me the full screen. I'm already <laughs> fucking enough as it is. My athlete's perfect booking. Give me the four screen. Give me the four screen. Me the... <laughs> so, um, whenever this goes out, probably by then, but I'll let you know that the 80th episode of the Soul Sessions will be released and it's going to be a very big episode. It will be with Lee McAteer. Now, you may not know that name, but he is the co owner of Progress Wrestling. Ooh. Big here in the UK. Ooh. And we'll see right now. Lee offers his insight as a promoter on the punk situation. So what that's going to be interesting. Yeah. So what he says might be interesting. Might not be if you're a punk fan. <laughs> so you sit tuned and you'll have a fun time. I'm going to go cry in the corner now because I'm just fucking perfect. Bookings broke me. God damn it. <laughs> It's what I, I love it. It's what I do. I love it. I love it. Oh. Absolutely love it. Um, as I said, yeah, thank you very much, Anthony. Thank you very much, Clark. Yep. Thank you very much, Broken Soul, for this awesome episode on CM Punk and this is his... the Broken Soul Sessions. Yes. Definitely. Oh, I love it. I love that. I love that. Broken Soul Sessions. Yeah, yeah. Very close to Broken Skull, but I like it. Broken Soul. Yeah. Um, yeah. Little so, so, yeah. double entendre. Yeah. Double entendre. Yeah, definitely. Uh -huh. Um, as I said earlier, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts on, on the CM Punk situation. Do you agree? What, what, what's your favorite moments? What's your worst moments of CM Punk, besides the obvious, if you will? Um, and uh, yeah, this has been Taken to the Table. I have been your host, Chaos. He has been Anthony. Down below has been Clark. Down there has been Broken Soul. Until next time, guys. Peace. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> take a bump. Why, Anthony? Why? <laughs>